Here's chapter seven of Escape from Mr. Romancello's Library. Heading back to school on Tuesday, Kyle knew he had to put on a brave face. He smiled as he walked with his class towards the auditorium for a special early morning assembly, the one where Mr. Luigi L. Lemoncello himself would announce the winners at the library lock-in essay contest. I hope he picks yours, Kyle whispered to Akini. Thanks, I do too. But the lock-in won't be as much fun without you. Well, when it's over and the library is officially open, you can take me on a tour. That's exactly what I'm going to do, if I win. If you don't, I'm sending a flaming squirrel after Mrs. Cameron. For this assembly, the 12th graders, most of whom were 12 years old, for this assembly, the seventh graders, most of whom were 12 years old, were told to sit in the front rows, close to the stage. That made Kyle feel a bit better. At least he'd get a chance to see Mr. Lemoncello up close and personal. But his hero wasn't even on stage. Just the principal, the school librarian, Miss Young Hans, and a red-headed woman in high-heeled shoes, who Kyle didn't recognize. She sat up straight, like someone had slipped a yardstick down the back of her bright red business suit. Her glasses were bright red, too. That's Dr. Yanina Zinchenko, gushed Miguel Fernandez, who is sitting on Kyle's right. Who's she? asked Akimi, seated to Kyle's left. Just the most famous librarian in the whole wide world. All right, boys and girls, said the principal at the podium. Settle down. Quiet, please. It is my great honor to introduce the head librarian for the new Alexandriaville Public, Public Library, Dr. Yanina Zinchenko. Everybody clapped. The tall lady in the red outfit strode to the microphone. Good morning. Her voice was breathy, with just a hint of a Russian accent. Twelve years ago, this town lost its one and only public library when it was torn down to make room for an elevated parking garage. Back then, many said the internet had rendered the old-fashioned library obsolete, and that new parking garage would attract shoppers to the boutiques and dress shops near the old bank building. But the library's demolition also meant that those of you who are now 12 years old have lived your entire lives without a public library. She looked down at the front rows. This is why, to kick off our summer reading program, 12 year old, 12 12 year olds will be selected to be the very first to explore the wonders waiting inside Mr. Lemoncello's extraordinary new library. You will, of course, need your parents' permission. We have slips for you to take home. You will also need a sleeping bag, a toothbrush, and if you please, a change of clothes. She smiled mysteriously. You might consider packing two pairs of underwear. Okay, Kyle thought. That's bizarre. Did the librarian really think seven, seventh graders weren't toilet trained? There will be movies, food, fun, games, and prizes. Also, each of our 12 winners will receive a $500 gift card, good towards the purchase of Lemoncello Games and Gizmos. Oh man, 500 bucks worth of free games and gear? Kyle sank a little lower in his seat. The next time someone gave him an extra credit essay assignment, he'd turn it in early. And now, here to announce our winners, the man behind the new library, the master gamester himself, Mr. Luigi Lemoncello. Dr. Zinchenko gestured to her left. The whole auditorium swung their heads. People were clapping and whistling and cheering, but nobody came on stage. The applause petered out. And then, on the opposite side of the stage, Kyle heard a very peculiar sound. 
It was cross between a burp and a squeak from a squeeze toy. And that's the end of chapter seven. I wonder what that could be.